Oh shit, here we go again. The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. Today, I present to you the next episode in my mental breakdown, otherwise called Season 2 of The Spanish Princess, created by Stars Media, which is owned by Lionsgate, who, some months ago, put a copyright claim on a 27 second meme video I did mocking the first season of this show, in spite of the fact that it contained no audio or footage from the trailer and only had two edited screenshots. Since I already hate the first season, you will forgive me if I am not in a very charitable mood compared to my reaction to last year's trailer. In fact, I am personally praying that Attila the Hun is resurrected, and uses his Hunnic hordes to burn every last copy of this series, and plant the fields in front of Lion's Gate with salt, so that nothing will ever grow there again. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Due to the copyright situation, I will do what I did last year, and use only screenshots with timestamps, and no footage from the trailer, but I will link the whole thing below. Who knows, Lionsgate might actually learn the meaning of fair use for once. Now I am afraid if you have come for a positive look at this, then you have come to the wrong channel, since I consider this series to be amongst the worst I have seen in my entire life. Before we begin, let us have a look at, um, the poster. Holy Jesus! What is that? The fuck is that? I... Wow. I had pretty low expectations going into this, but my god, does that maternity armour look terrible. Now, yes, we know she was pregnant and that she briefly wore armour when addressing some soldiers. More on that later, but really? This is what you used for the poster? Really? Why does it look so terrible? Funny thing is, it looks different in the series itself, so you made a stupid set just for the poster? Really? Anyway, on to the trailer. So we start off with some shots of the coronation of Henry and Catherine, and a few other bits like them walking in the garden, whilst Catherine talks about how God has given them a son and each other, and basically how their life is going pretty okay. So not so bad thus far. In 1511, Catherine did give birth to a son, and for a while, everything was coming up Catherine. Up until the moment their son died. I will admit, at least the crowns here don't look too bad, and are fairly close to the Tudor crown, made during the reign of Henry VIII, that lasted up until 1649, when it was sadly broken up after the execution of Charles I. In recreations of it, the fabric appears to be purple rather than green, but they may have got the green colour from this depiction of it in a portrait of Charles I, so hey, A for effort I guess. After this though, we really start to wade into the swamp. Catherine tells us that England is a... a boar? Eh? It's a bit hard to tell with the accent, which is even worse this time round, but... A boar? Really? Couldn't go for a lion or a leopard or something? Or did she say England is at war? I really can't tell. More importantly though, we get a few shots of some soldiers who have just returned from fighting in the 1300s. Oh, wait, sorry, these are meant to be the soldiers of the early Tudor army, apparently. <sighs> There are a few more shots of them throughout the trailer, but deary me, I think they're even worse than they were in the previous series. Historically, most soldiers tended to wear hats and tunics, the tunics usually being white and green in the Tudor livery colours, with the Red Cross of St George, whilst at Flodden, some of Stanley's men were wearing his livery. Some billmen would wear army and gambians, but not like this. At best, some helmets and so on do work, and with the knights and the noble and the full plate armour is okay, I guess, but... A lot of the kit here looks way too medieval. We are well into the Renaissance by this point, you know. The men also seem to be carrying random banners with the Cross of St George on them, as opposed to the beautiful standards carried by the noblemen and their retinues during these campaigns. That would look great on screen, but hey, we need more money for maternity cuirasses for the poster. We also get a shot of what I think is meant to be Henry invading France, which, historically, saw him take about 30 to 40,000 men to Calais, then in English possession, and proceed to besiege a handful of French cities, the only notable action being the so-called Battle of the Spurs. Please see my series on that campaign for more information, which I swear I will finish one of these days. Here though, he can only muster about half a dozen ships to take him and his army over there apparently. 
The Earl of Surrey here, though, is quite right in cautioning the king about launching a campaign, and, historically, the king's council was opposed to the idea of him going personally. Surrey himself had hoped to actually lead the invasion, but instead he was left in the north, which leads on to the next section. We get some brief shots of the Scots, and at a few other points in the trailer where, at least they do have pikemen. King James IV, before taking his army into England, had imported many pikes from the continent, and a considerable number of French soldiers to train his army in the new methods of war that were proving successful on the continent, most notably amongst the Swiss and the Landschnecht. Of course, we don't dwell on this too long before we get to Catherine proclaiming that she wants to fight, which is met with laughter by the Privy Council. The king also, quite rightly, tells her that it is a bad idea. It would help, of course, if the actor playing Henry could actually act, but hey, good casting is too much to ask for in this series. We now get Woolsey, I think. Difficult to tell, since he looks nothing like him, but hey, whatever. Telling Catherine that her main job is to give Henry an heir whilst also then having a scene which, I assume, is the funeral of Prince Henry, their son that died in 1511, if I were to guess. Of course, any drama with Catherine of Aragon is inevitably going to cover the main reason for her downfall, that being none of her male children surviving to give the king an heir. So, hey, maybe that might be one element that would be handled better, but the jury is out on that one. And now a brief shot of Princess Mary Tudor, the sister of Henry VIII, who looked like this at the end of the last season, and has now aged 20 years in about two or so. Can't wait to see how they're going to mess that all up with her marriage to the King of France, and then her eloping with Charles Brandon. I must admit, I thought this series would only go so far as the late 1510s, but apparently we are going all the way to Mary and Anne Boleyn, and their affairs with the King, which were in the 1520s. Again, can't wait to see how that goes. No doubt Catherine will still look like she's in her 20s throughout this entire series. Well, here we go. I actually cleared you for active duty. Barely. Why? You could probably get a step. Why? 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 Now, yes, as I mentioned earlier, Catherine travelled to the town of Buckingham and addressed the soldiers of a reserve army that was being put together whilst dressed in armour. The most interesting thing about Buckingham is that it is nearly 300 miles away from Flodden, so it would appear that we're going to have pregnant Catherine teleporting to Flodden and fighting on the front lines. <sighs> now I am getting a bit sick of this. Firstly, Flodden was won by the Howards, men and by English Howards! Yeah, what Henry said in a much better film. The Earl of Surrey was the man who organised and led the army that defeated James IV at Flodden, not Catherine. It was his decisions on the day that led to the defeat of the Scots. Catherine may have been brave in organising the reserves, which would not have seen action anyway, since it was September, and James, even if he had won Flodden, would have had to retire to winter quarters anyway. Not to mention that Catherine's forces were the last line of defence. Lord Lovell had a second army at Nottingham that was marching north that would have met James well before then. Please stop trying to make out that Catherine was a soldier. She was not. She spent a lot of her time making and embroidering banners for the troops. Yes, she was regent in the king's stead and made captain general, and also consulted with the council on many matters, and I want to even give you that perhaps she may have helped with some of the organisation beforehand, but we should not diminish the achievements of Surrey in raising his army, leading his army, and winning his victory at Flodden. Now, with the armour point, she may well have worn armour at Buckingham, although I doubt it would have looked like this, since she would not have been expected to fight, and would have worn something more for show if I had to guess since we have very little actual evidence as to her exact appearance at Buckingham. We know the Royal Goldsmith was paid for garnishing a headpiece with crown gold, but armour could mean any sort of armour, really. It might just have been a helm and some bits for the occasion, for all we know. Not maternity armour. That would be held to adjust on a weekly basis, as her pregnancy continued. Still, I will give in on the armour point for now, since we have bigger fish to fry. Even if we throw all historical facts out of the window and say she is on the battlefield for some reason, would she be charging in there, cutting people down left, right and centre? No, she would not be there at all. It was becoming a lot rarer for kings to fight on the front line in the medieval fashion. In fact, James IV himself fought on the front line and it did not go too well for him. Even Henry VIII at the Battle of the Spurs was held back by his escort, since the monarch's life is very valuable. A queen's even more so. And a queen that is heavily pregnant with the king's child is the most valuable of all. She is not going to charge into the battle for fuck's sake. Yeah, some more battle shots and the like, with Catherine saying this is a land of women and children whilst the king's army is away. Even though there were a good 25,000 men on the English side of Flodden, James might have assumed that all of the best troops were in France, but he would have been mistaken. 
Surrey's army was a pretty decent force, including the northern levies and the forces of other noblemen, backed by Surrey's own son, the Lord Admiral, who had taken some marines from the fleet. Of course, I doubt these soldiers are going to be present at all, and instead, Catherine's going to start conscripting women for the army as well. Um, wait a minute, hold up. Shit, I was joking. There was actually women charging into the battle at Flodden. <sighs> at this point, a bunch of high school girls driving World War II tanks is more believable than this. Henry exclaims that I am your king, and then we get a brief shot of a jousting scene. Now, this of course will be referring to the jousting accidents the king had over the years. So, hey, not all is lost on the historical accuracy front, I guess. And then the rest of the trailer is some more flodden shots and other stuff with Catherine saying she'll not stop fighting, yada 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 yada. So, some final thoughts on this thing. I had pretty low expectations, given my hatred for the other series I've had to endure for my Tudor Rant series. But my god, this looks really bad. We are going to get massive retcons, such as Catherine actually physically fighting at Flodden, to make her appear more badass and so on, when the actual history would have been perfectly fine. Now, I have done a few unscripted videos covering this series, and there are a few things I've mentioned in that series that were not in this trailer, but I expect will be making an appearance. Margaret Tudor? Shut up, Meg. We'll have some of her story told. We only get one brief shot of her in this trailer, so God knows how they adapt that. Probably have her meet Catherine before the battle or something. In fact, I think this is actually at Flodden. Oh, God. The Field of the Cloth of Gold, one of Wolsey's great triumphs, well, for a couple of years at least, before Henry went to war with France again, is going to be in the series. Whether we will actually see Wolsey organise this, I don't know, since historical accuracy in this has been thrown off a cliff. It appears that Flodden is going to be the primary focus of this season, and I'm really dreading it. We see the Scots in something of a formation, but then the English, some of whom do at least have bill hooks, so hey, perhaps people are listening to my complaints, charge in there without any formation, organisation, or anything really, when in the real battle, the day was decided when James's men lost their formation going over boggy ground, destroying the effectiveness of the pike block, and thus giving the English the advantage with their bill hooks. I must say, the acting in this trailer seemed even worse than the first season, although admittedly I've not seen it since it came out last year. Henry in particular seemed really off, and Catherine's accent seems to have gotten worse. Apparently though, we will be getting a few new characters in here, like King James IV and Sir Thomas More, so maybe they can salvage something from this train wreck. Overall then, I'm really not looking forward to this series at all. I may already be heavily biased against it, but just from looking at the trailer, I just know it is going to be about as enjoyable as being imprisoned in a castle and having a red-hot poker jammed up my backside. Well, at least I have the first Princess Principal movie to look forward to called Crown Handler, the trailer of which looks really good, and way more authentic to its time period than this series. Thank God it'll be out soon. I mean, it's not like there has been a... Oh. oh well, that is all for now. As you can guess, when the second season comes out, I will break it down in full via another Tudor rant, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, this has been the Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day.